place your hand on your chest. Take a deep breath in. Feel the movement of your chest. Now breathe out. Again, feel the movement of your chest. What you've just done when you breathed in, that is known as inhalation. And when you breathed out air, that is known as exhalation. And these two are the components of breathing. And in this video, we're going to be talking about how this breathing works. What is the mechanism behind it? Now, if you want, you can pause the video, take a minute and go through the different parts of the respiratory system. But in today's video, we're going to be focusing on the lungs, the diaphragm, the ribs and the intercostal muscles. So for breathing to occur, there are two main factors involved. So one is the difference in pressure. What is this difference in pressure? We know that the air molecules in the atmosphere exert a pressure known as the atmospheric pressure. And usually the value of atmospheric pressure is 760 mmHg. Like that, there is pressure inside the lungs as well known as the intrapulmonary pressure. Okay, why are these two important? You know that air can move from a region of higher pressure to a region of lower pressure, which means a pressure gradient is needed for air to move. And somehow within our body, this pressure gradient needs to be created because atmospheric pressure doesn't change much. It is usually constant at 760 mmHg. For air to move inside and outside the lungs, there needs to be a pressure gradient compared to the atmosphere. This difference in pressure, this pressure gradient is created by the contraction and relaxation of the muscles. What are the muscles that are involved here? The diaphragm and the intercostal muscles. Intercostal muscles are located between the ribs. Inter means between and costal refers to the ribs. So these are the muscles located between the ribs. There are two types of intercostal muscles, internal and external. So how are these muscles, the intercostal muscles and the diaphragm involved in creating this pressure gradient? To understand that, let's take a closer look at the lungs. So here we have uh, the two lungs. Excuse the poor diagram. For this video, let's just assume that these are the lungs. This is the diaphragm. These are the ribs and the intercostal muscles. So how does the mechanism of breathing work? At rest or in between cycles of breathing, the atmospheric pressure is equal to the intrapulmonary pressure, which means that air can neither leave the lungs or enter the lungs. So somehow the pressure gradient needs to be created. Now this pressure gradient is created during inhalation. And how does that work? What happens is the diaphragm and the intercostal muscles receive nerve signals from the region of the brain known as medulla oblongata. So this is the region of the brain that controls the involuntary mechanism of breathing. So as they receive nerve signals from the medulla oblongata, the diaphragm and the intercostal muscles, they contract. And as the diaphragm contracts, it is pulled downwards. So the diaphragm is a dome shaped muscle. And as it contracts, it sort of flattens like this. So the flattening of the diaphragm causes the thoracic cavity to be pulled downwards as well. And this causes an increase in lung volume. So the lung volume increases as the diaphragm contracts. What about the intercostal muscles? Well, the intercostal muscles also contract and they pull the ribs upwards. They're attached to the ribs, right? And they pull the ribs upwards. This also increases the lung volume. So totally during inhalation, as the diaphragm and the intercostal muscles contract, the lung volume increases. Now what happens to the intrapulmonary pressure as the lung volume increases? So here we have the lungs that have expanded basically, the lung volume has increased. Now the air inside the lungs has more space to move around. The molecules, they have more space to move around, which means they don't bump into each other or collide with each other more frequently as they did before. 
which means the air pressure or the intrapulmonary pressure decreases. The intrapulmonary pressure decreases during the process of inhalation. Now, the intrapulmonary pressure has decreased to a value less than the atmospheric pressure. Atmospheric pressure is still 760 mmHg, but the intrapulmonary pressure has now become say 756 mmHg. This is a pressure gradient. So, there is a difference in pressure between the atmosphere and the lungs and a pressure gradient is created as the diaphragm and the intercostal muscles contract and the lung volume increases. With the increase in lung volume, air is now able to enter the lungs. So, this is what happens during the process of inhalation. The lung volume expands which decreases the intrapulmonary pressure thereby air moves in because of this pressure gradient because the atmosphere is at a higher pressure compared to the lungs. What happens during exhalation? Sort of the reverse happens. During exhalation, the diaphragm relaxes. The diaphragm relaxes and moves upwards. The intercostal muscles also relax and they move downwards. They move the rib downwards. As this happens, the lung volume decreases. Lung volume decreases. As the lung volume decreases, basically now it looks like this. As the lung volume is decreasing, the molecules inside the lungs, they have less space to move around. So, they collide more frequently with one another. As they are colliding more frequently with one another, the intrapulmonary pressure increases. The atmospheric pressure is still 760 mmHg, but now the lung pressure increases. It was 756 mmHg when inhalation was occurring, but now it becomes greater than the atmospheric pressure, say 764 mmHg. So now there is a pressure gradient again. But this time the pressure inside the lungs is greater than the atmospheric pressure. Because of this, because of this pressure gradient, the air moves out of the lungs into the atmosphere. So during exhalation, the lung volume decreases and the intrapulmonary pressure increases. So now the Pulmonary pressure, intrapulmonary pressure is greater than the atmospheric pressure which means that air leaves the lungs and is exhaled out into the atmosphere. So, this is the mechanism of breathing. This explains why when we go to higher altitudes like in mountains, we find it difficult to breathe. As the altitude increases, the air pressure decreases. Atmospheric pressure decreases and thereby the lung pressure also decreases. But even then the gradient needs to be maintained for breathing to occur which means that we need to take in more deeper breaths at more frequent intervals to get the same amount of oxygen to the body. Which is why when we are at high altitudes we find it difficult to breathe because of the extra effort that is required to maintain this pressure gradient. Now, one more thing that you should remember is that inhalation is an active process. Because it involves the contraction of the diaphragm and the intercostal muscles, it is an active process because for muscles to contract, they need ATP. So, inhalation is an active process. Exhalation is mainly governed by the recoil of the muscles as they relax and go back to their original shape. The recoil of the muscles is what makes the lung volume decrease which is why exhalation is a passive process. So, we utilize energy to inhale but we don't utilize energy when we exhale.